lonely speck in the raging Atlantic, 250 miles off the southwest coast of Ireland. That was the position of the small American freighter Flying Enterprise when she first hit the world headlines. These are the kind of seas that flooded her hold, causing the vessel to list dangerously to port and bringing the American destroyer John W. Weeks in answer to her signals of distress. We bring you now these exclusive, specially enlarged first pictures of the crippled American freighter taken for us by an officer aboard the destroyer. Note the angle of the ship and the waves which washed her slanting decks. By this time, Captain Carson had ordered his passengers and crew to abandon ship, but he remained alone with only his courage and faith in his ship as his companions. The captain's first radio message, sent out on a homemade transmitter, described the events which led up to his lonely vigil. When a, a second hurricane came up, a second cyclonic storm, they also forced 12, and uh, there were some terrific mountains of... Uh, I don't know if you were out in the same one, but it was nothing but seas and water all over the place. And amid all his great peril, Captain Carlson never forgot his duty as master, his main concern being for the safety of his ship's papers. Yeah, okay, go legal. I'm now ready to throw my life jacket with the papers in. The papers are in a watertight container. I know, Captain, as soon as you get those papers, I wish you would open them up and see if they're dry. If they're okay, just put them in your safe. Following the lone skipper's request for hot coffee, eager hands on the destroyer packed containers with coffee, sandwiches, sweets, cigarettes and newspapers. The only problem now was to get them to Captain Carson. pictures, we can understand why so many attempts to send food were unsuccessful, as the messenger line had to be shot from the destroyer's heaving deck to the flying Enterprise. Some of those much needed supplies ended in the Atlantic, but finally the men of the John W. Weeks got a line aboard. So the captain's long days and nights of anxiety aboard a badly listing ship in mid-ocean were made more bearable by the kindly action of the destroyer's crew. More drama, for in seas like these, the brave crew of the US freighter Southland manned lifeboats and rescued 15 survivors who had jumped from the Enterprise into the icy waters. After valuable service as watchdog, the Weeks was relieved and returned to Plymouth, full of praise for Captain Carlson. Well, what do you think about Captain Carlson? I don't know. I think he has much courage the way that he uh, stayed on that ship. The destroyer's captain tells of his first glimpse of the Enterprise and of his talks with Captain Carlson. He looked like she was going to capsize at any moment. I told Captain Carlson when I left that it was an honor and a privilege to be able to stand by a man of his caliber. I think he's very courageous, persevering, and has a lot of faith in his ship. Meanwhile, the parents of the gallant skipper, Mr. and Mrs. Carlson Sr., arrived at London Airport from Copenhagen, hoping for the return of their son and his ship, then being towed by the British tug Turmoil. And this is the slow route back to Falmouth, as at an average speed of three knots, turmoil slowly hauls the reluctant enterprise away from the savage Atlantic wastes. Yes, the story of how the turmoil got her tow rope on the listing freighter in mountainous seas and the fearless leap aboard by the tug's mate, Kenneth Dancy, to join Captain Enterprise has fashioned one of the sea dramas of the century.
and ever near at hand, the US destroyer Willard Keith escorted the tug and her unwieldy charge towards the safety of an English port. So the long tow went on, not without incident, but at times the stricken vessel lashed about at the end of her 750 yards tow line. While aboard, the skipper and his companion, Dancy, kept watchful eyes on that tow line on which depended their salvation. Let us then salute the stay-put captain, who, for his courage when the odds were listed against him, has been made a Knight of the Order of the Danebrog by the King of Denmark. A fitting reward for a courageous seaman, Captain Kurt Carlsen. Thank you.